One of our Canadian listeners writes, Could you please explain the doctrine of sanctification and the second work of grace as taught by Nazarene and holiness churches? Well, it was the doctrine of holiness that actually John Wesley preached, and he is the man who put the great emphasis upon it, more so on that than he did free will, by the way. One of the greatest hymns on the assurance of our salvation came from Charles Wesley, so that the thing they did emphasize was a holy life. And by the way, that is something that needs to be emphasized, and it's entirely lacking today. You hear all these books, how-to books on how to make your marriage work, how to be a success, and how to be a radiant Christian, all that sort of thing. God doesn't want you to be a radiant Christian. God wants you to be holy. God wants you to be set aside for Him. He wants you to serve Him, regardless of what business you're in. You belong to Him if you've been saved. So that is something that John Wesley emphasized. Now, John Wesley emphasized it by putting down certain rules and regulations. And that's the reason that the people that came from him are called Methodists. But the Methodists don't have much methods today. They've lost out on that. I heard Bishop Moore years ago make this statement. He says, I wish that the Methodists were as afraid of sin as they are of holiness because they certainly are afraid of holiness. Well, they've gotten away from that today. In fact, the church has. All these Bible teachers I listen to, even on the radio, nobody's talking about living a holy life unto God. I'm not sure that God intended for your marriage to work if you have done nothing in the world but been out of the will of God from when you started up until now. God wants you to be holy. God wants you to serve Him. And from that would come a happy marriage. From that would come a radiant life and all that sort of thing. Now, the Nazarene church years ago apparently saw the fact that the Methodists were slipping away from the original teaching. And so they came out from the Methodist church and attempted to continue to promote a holy life. I've always admired them for that. I live in Pasadena, where they did have their college. It was a Nazarene college in less than three blocks of where I live, and I got acquainted with many of their people. They live in the area, and the only thing I could find fault with them was that I know a very fine lay preacher. He told me one day, and he met me on the street. He says, Brother McGee, I want you to know I got sanctified last night. And I said, you did? I said, what does that mean? He said, well, it means that I don't commit sin anymore. Well, I want to tell you, I knew that brother, and I do think that he changed for a while, but he dropped back in his ways, and from then on, he didn't commit sin. He made mistakes, and he didn't call those sins, but he did commit sins. And I've always felt that part of the doctrine is something we could leave out, but I'd be very frank with you. I always admired them and told them so. I had the privilege of speaking several times at their college, and I congratulated them on the fact that they were, you know, emphasizing a holy life. By the way, I'm not quite sure whether they are today, whether they are putting the emphasis there. I think that they've done like most of the rest of us. They've gone after these how-to books. And if they can just become a radiant Christian and make their marriage work, well, they've got it made, so they think. But that doesn't mean you're living a holy life by any means.